The year is 2154. Blue-skinned humanoid beings known as the Navi live on the world Pandora in the Alpha Centauri star system. Sounds like science fiction? And of course it is. Avatar fans will have realized this from the beginning. But there is always a hint of real science in science fiction. So let's take a look at the most popular astronomical objects in science fiction and see what the universe has to say about them. Welcome to Chasing Starlights. I'm Susanna Randall, an astronomer at the European Southern Observatory, ESO, and I'm a rather critical science fiction fan. As a scientist, I tend to know when something's just a little bit off. I recently watched the movie Avatar, and as much as I'd love to dive the seas of Pandora, I realize that's probably not on the cards for me anytime soon. Science writers, old and new, have always been fascinated by the idea of colonizing space, in particular, the stellar system closest to us, Alpha Centauri. In the TV hit show, Lost in Space, this is where humankind finds shelter to escape a dying Earth. Alpha Centauri is also the home of Pandora, lush, beautiful, and entirely made up. Or is it? The Alpha Centauri star system, at least, is very real. It's just over four light years away from us, and it consists of three stars. Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. Avatar is set in Alpha Centauri A, where no planets have been found so far, despite extensive searches. However, using the VLT and ESO's 3.6 meter telescope, astronomers were able to find planets around Proxima Centauri. One of them, intriguingly, has a similar mass to the Earth, and also it's located in the so-called habitable zone, which means it's at just the right distance from its star for water to be in liquid form, and life to be a possibility. This planet was discovered in 2016 and called Proxima b. Since then, astronomers have been trying to figure out whether it's a lush water world like Pandora or a rocky, barren, dead world. My money is on the latter because Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star and it shows very strong flares. So it intermittently ejects high energy radiation that would surely bake and extinguish any life that may have formed on the planets around it. However, all is not lost for the Alpha Centauri system, because Alpha Centauri A is a sun-like star, so much more stable than Proxima Centauri. And although no planets have yet been found around this star, the detection limits weren't very good, so an Earth-like planet in the habitable zone would not have been discovered by the observations made with telescopes we have right now. So, who knows? Pandora may be hiding just beneath our noses. It's not just aliens that are popular in science fiction, but also exotic sounding stars. One of the most evocative is surely Beetlejuice. It inspired a mischievous undead creature in the 1988 Tim Burton movie Beetlejuice. 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 You gotta say my name three times. <laughs> But Betelgeuse, the star, is also popular in science fiction. It was the setting of the iconic Planet of the Apes. It was also the home system of Ford Prefect and Zaphod Beeblebrox in the extremely funny Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, one of my favorite books of all times. And finally, it is referenced in one of the most famous sci-fi scenes of all time, the final scene of Blade Runner. 
The shoulder of Orion refers to Betelgeuse's real location in the sky. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. Betelgeuse is in fact one of the easiest stars to spot, and it's also one of the brightest, even though it is 650 light years away from us. And that is because Betelgeuse is not just any old star, but a red supergiant. And it's so humongous that if you placed it at the center of our solar system, it would engulf not just the Earth, but all the inner planets and even Jupiter. Betelgeuse is not just a science fiction star, but also a reality show celebrity, because it made headlines a few years back. Betelgeuse was dimming, and astronomers all around the world thought that it might be about to explode and go supernova. But is Betelgeuse about to explode? The signs say probably not. Observations taken during the dimming at ESO's VLT show that what probably happened is that the star kind of burped. A large bubble of gas was ejected from the star. It cooled and became dust. Dust obscures light, so the star appeared for us to be dimming. Eventually, Betelgeuse will explode, probably within the next 100,000 years or so. When it happens, it's going to be spectacular. There's going to be a bright spot in the sky that's going to be visible for several months, even during daytime. And surely that will inspire many science fiction stories. Finally, let's take a look at the probably most exciting astronomical objects, black holes. Already in 1979, Disney produced the then most expensive movie called The Black Hole. I have to say the critical scientist in me is not so impressed because these animations are not that realistic. In 2014, another film starring a black hole came out, Interstellar. Here, the black hole is a supermassive black hole in a faraway galaxy and it's entirely made up. The black hole's name is Gargantua. In order to get the science right anyway, director Christopher Nolan asked Nobel Prize winner Kip Thorne for advice. His team produced scientifically accurate animations of Gargantua, with one small caveat. In order for Gargantua to look like a real movie star, they neglected one physical effect. In 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration presented the first real image of a black hole. This was an image of the supermassive black hole in the center of the galaxy M87. In order to achieve this image, telescopes from around the world had to be combined into one giant virtual telescope. The most powerful of these telescopes was ALMA, of which ESO is a partner. Now the interesting thing about the image of the black hole is that the bottom part of the donut is brighter than the top part of the donut. And this is due to the very effect that was removed in the animations of Gargantua, Doppler beaming. Doppler beaming shapes what we see around a black hole. Basically, the swirling matter that's coming towards us appears brighter than the matter that's moving away from us. Since the M87 image, the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration have also made an image of the matter swirling around the black hole in the center of our own galaxy. And they hope to eventually make a movie. What was once science fiction may soon become reality. I find it fascinating how the real scientific exploration of the universe sparks our imagination and how science fiction and science are beginning to morph. We've seen this happen for black holes, for stars and planets. The only thing missing now is alien life. And that brings us back to Pandora and the Navi. How do we find out whether they are science rather than fiction? Well, one way would be to travel there and have a look. The small problem 
the Alpha Centauri system is some 40 trillion kilometers away. If we traveled in one of today's spacecraft, it would take us around 75,000 years to get there. A much quicker option would be to wait for ESO's new telescope, the extremely large telescope, the ELT. That is set to come online later this decade, and with that, we'll be able to take a closer look at the Alpha Centauri system. Just looking with the ELT rather than going there would have an added bonus. We wouldn't start an interstellar war. Some aspects of science fiction should stay firmly in the realm of fiction. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And to be notified of future episodes of Chasing Starlight, activate the notification bell. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. For every episode, we will answer some of your questions.